Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's learning objective is in yellow, and we're learning to apply the F over T approach to solve basic probabilities. So I've circled F over T because that's the key thing that we're going to be learning from today's video. So let's explain that first. So what I mean by that, the, the probability of a given event that's always going to be equal to the favorable outcomes, and I'll explain what that means. So favorable outcomes divided by the total outcomes. And again, I'll explain what that means as well. So favorable outcomes divided by total outcomes. Apologies about the funny S there. And so what the F stands for, they are the outcomes defined by the question. So out outcomes defined by the question. And T, they are all possible outcomes. And I'll explain what each of those means as we get into some examples as well. So let's switch pen color. I think the best way to probably develop our understanding of this is to get into some questions. And we're going to start applying this formula. And the other thing I want to note is I do want us to start using something called notation um, that is part of our working. Of our working. And this is specific to probability. Okay, so let's start off with the first one. Um, what's the probability of getting a three? So what I want us to do, probability of three. So that part there that I've underlined, that's that notation that I was talking about. It's using mathematical language to explain what the answers are. So P stands for probability, and the thing in brackets is the favorable outcome. Um, notice we chatted about that favorable outcome defined by the question. So the probability of a three, that's always going to be equal to F over T. From there, I want us to start thinking about the total. The total one should we be thinking about first. So we're looking at a standard pack of cards, and we've actually got an example or a layout of all of those cards down the bottom right. What is the total or how many different possible outcomes are there? So if you have a look, there goes one, two, three, four down this way, and then there's 13 down the long way. So four times 13, that gets us to 52. So 52 cards in a standard pack. Of these 52, how many of them are threes? And basically what we can do is we can just circle them. So we've got one, two, three, four threes. We can see them down there. I've circled them all. And those are the four favorable ones that are defined by our question. So probability would be four over 52. And from this point here, we must start getting into the habit. Please round that to four decimal points. So four divided by 52 in our calculator. It gets us to 0 0.0769, and I rounded that to four decimal places. And the reason we want decimals with 4 dp rounding, it allows us to compare numbers to see which events are more or less likely to occur. So that's the first one. A bad example of this, a lot of you people will just say probability 4 over 52 equals 0 0.0769. So that's a bad example. It doesn't tell me what the probability relates to, and you haven't told me what the rounding is as well. So try to avoid that. Try to make sure your working looks like mine. So let's rattle through the rest of these. Hopefully we get in the habit of them. So we're trying to find the probability of a spade. That there is going to be equal to F over T. If you have a look at the spades, they are this row of our cards. There are 13 of them in total. So of our total, there are going to be 52. And of those 52, we care about those 13 that we've highlighted. That there actually comes to 1 and 4, which comes to 0 0.25. And we don't need to really worry about rounding that as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's have a look at the next one, the probability of a prime number. Um, same deal. 
f over t, our total is 52. Of these 52 cards, how many of them do we care about? Well, an ace isn't a number, so it's not any of those. Um, neither are the face cards down the end. A two is a prime number, so it could be any of these four. So let's put, could be any of those four, could be any three. We're not really fussed about the fours. It could be a five. Not fussed about the sixes, could be the sevens. Not fussed about the eights, nines, or tens. So from that, we've identified 16 cards which would have a prime number value on them. So that means the favorable would be 16. And when you put that into your calculator, 16 divided by 52, that there is 0 0.3077. So next question, what is the probability we get that face card? So probability of face card. If you're not sure what a face card is, they are any of these ones down the end with a face on it. You can kind of see that in all the drawings um, of the king, queen, or jack, they all have a face on it. And we can see that there's 12 of those. So 3 times 4, 12. So 12 over 52. Oh, I forgot to write the formula up properly. So that's going to be f over t. And we know that there are 52 cards in total. We only care about the 12 of them with a face on it. So 12 divided by 52, that equals to 0 0.2308. And again, still rounded to 40p, but I run out of room, so I'm not stating those. The next question, the probability of a red queen. So hopefully we get the hang of these and we can go through these a bit faster. Probability of a red queen. Same deal, f over t. So there are still 52 cards of interest. Of those 52, how many of them are red queens? And we can see we've got one, two down the bottom. So that's going to be two over 52. Two over 52. And that gets us to 0 0.0385. And that's rounded to 40p as well. The next one, so these ones are a bit trickier. What's the probability of getting a 10 or a heart? So the 10 sit along here, there's four of them, the hearts sit along here, there's 13 of them. But the trick is, do not add 14 and 13 together to get to 17, because what you'll be doing is you'll be double counting this 10 of hearts in the middle. So if you have a look, there are 13 hearts along the middle here, and then there are three extra 10s in addition to those. So 13 plus 3 actually gets us to 16. So a probability of a 10 or a heart f over t, there are 52 cards in total. We only care about the 16 of them that meet our favorable criteria. Put that into a calculator, 16 divided by 52. That gets us to 0 0.3077. And two questions left. Probability of not a heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write heart dash. So that little dash means not heart. Um, same deal, f over t, there are 52 cards in total of those 52. Um, so the hearts sit in the middle here, so it's going to be the other 39 that will be the not hearts. That there is going to be equal to 3 over 4 if you simplify that fraction, which comes to 0 0.75. And the last question, the hardest one in the video, what is the probability that the card is neither a diamond or a face card? So what we're going to do... so. It's basically trying to say it's not that, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to count out how many diamonds or face cards there are, and then find out how many cards are not that, or how many are left over from the 52. So the diamonds sit along the bottom, so there's 13 of those. The face cards, well there's going to be 9 other face cards up here, and that there becomes 13 plus 9, that gets us to 22 cards would be a diamond or a face card. So that means the other, if we take away that from 52, the other portion of cards will be neither a diamond or heart. So we're going to go, what's the probability of them, right? D for diamond or a face card, FC for face card. That's going to be F over T. Our total is going to be 52. And our favorable are going to be all of the 52 cards minus the 22 that we've identified as diamonds or face cards, which will leave us with 30 divided by 52. And 30 divided by 52, that gets us to 0 
0.69. And again, that was rounded to 40p like all the other ones were. So guys, hopefully you found the video on learning to use the F over T approach useful. And hopefully you also learn a bit about the pack of cards and how they are set out as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you get down the notes from today's video. Understand how the formula works. Understand what F is. Understand what T is. Understand how to do your notations. And finally, understand how to apply the basic probability questions. All right, let's go.